irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Answers for the Family with Alan Cardoza and Matt Polachek, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome to another edition of Answers for the Family. I'm your host, Alan Cardoza. My co-host, Dr. Matt Polachek, had a prior commitment as the director of the Hazleton Betty Ford Clinic, which is also a reminder to me of all of the good works that he and his team does for our community. Now, for those of you that have been listening, sending in questions and comments, thank you so much. And please continue to help to spread the word that every Monday from 11 a.m. to noon Pacific time, this show will bring you special guests that can inspire, educate, and in some cases entertain while bringing answers and options to making our lives happier, healthier, and more successful. And you can all do me a huge favor. Please forward one of our shows to your social media groups or to someone you know that can benefit from a particular show. And Answers for the Family will continue to address a variety of issues such as locating a runaway teen, family crisis intervention, building self-esteem, dealing with addictions, and so much more. And we will continue to introduce you to talented authors and new innovations in the areas of health, security, and fun for you and your family. Now our topic today is a a phrase many of us have heard, a penny for your thoughts. Well, sometimes that's not always, um, you know, our thoughts aren't always what we want them to be. And it's not uncommon when people experience life stressors or difficulties in relationships to feel as if they're broken or their life is unraveling. Now this is especially true with young people. A Penny for Your Thoughts, the interactive card game, supports all people in feelings that are, allow them to be more understood, valued, and connected. Our guests are Janine McGraw and Catherine Snell Ryan, co-founders of A Penny for Your Thoughts, which sparks conversation and playfully opens the door to kids' social and emotional lives. Now, prior to committing her life to the study of relationships and the field of mental health and well-being, Janine spent more than 15 years working in marketing and communications for global technology corporations. Janine is a licensed professional counselor, and her education includes an MS in couples and family therapy from the University of Oregon and a BA in communications from St. Mary's College. Catherine has worked as a family therapist for 14 years and is from Chicago, where she earned her graduate degree. She is committed to helping kids, teens, and families connect with one another, communicate in healthy ways, and rediscover their fun and joy. Both agree that family life is a complex and challenging experience where everyone's vulnerabilities are regularly brought to the surface. Navigating these complexities so that relationships are strengthened is what they are most passionate about. Janine and Catherine, welcome to Answers for the Family. Thank Thank you. you. We're happy to be here. Well, first I wanted to share that I absolutely love what you're doing because I love the fact of communicating with young people in a way that makes it fun. Uh, You know, as someone who has worked with uh, young people and has... Um, pick them up out of difficult situations and taking them to places where they can get help. I've always loved the concept of, of play therapy or ways in which communication has been done in a way that was, that was a form of play or something that did not feel like it added to the anxiety of whatever it is that they're already going through. So, um, so when I got the chance and I saw what you were doing with a penny for your thoughts, uh, I couldn't wait to get you guys on here. So thank you for taking the time to come on. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So, and actually, and we have somebody that's, uh, that's calling in, uh, but they're calling in from a block number, and, and we choose not to do that. So please, if you're calling in, uh, unblock your number and, and call in. And if you have a question for our guests, we would love to share that. So now... You know, let's talk about, you know, the importance of keeping the lines of communication open with children. As I was saying, I love the fact of the way in which you're doing it, but let's talk about how important that really is. 
it's you know I, I think keeping lines of communication open um, that's our that's our way in that's how we see and know how our kids are feeling what's going on um, who makes them feel big or proud or strong who makes them feel small um, or insecure um, I think these lines of communication it, it's it's essential if we want to stay close to our kids and really have an understanding of who is in their life. Um, and and what's and what's happening for better and worse, and and there's so many ways, you know, there's so many ways um, adding on to to help kids do this, and you know, among them, you know, one of the one of the ways we really like is you know helping kids to learn and apply um, the attitudes and skills to manage their emotions, feel and show empathy for others, and to set and achieve positive goals, and this really leads to creating positive relationships that they can be happy about and um, better capable of managing situations. Now, now, what brought the two of you together and, and at what point did you, did you decide that, that setting this up with an interactive card game was, was something that was going to be this successful? Sure. So we have been sharing office space now for around four years. We met at a clinical practice together and um, just in passing uh, one another in the office and sharing information, uh, we really uh, were talking with each other about um, emotions and how important they are and how there are tools out there to um, identify help kids. Oops, I'm having a little bit of feedback. Help kids identify emotions and um, but we really wanted to take it a step further and help kids figure out how to identify their emotions and connect them to people involved, places involved, and and have some useful skills to manage their emotions. So it really came um, with just sharing office space and, and talking together and working together and um, looking for, for something that went one step further. Absolutely. The, you know, we were actually looking for a resource that did not yet exist. Um, you know, there are decks of feelings cards, um, but there are no decks of feelings cards that really take take it further. And kids have a tendency to be pretty quiet, sometimes secretive about what's going on, especially if there's shame involved, feelings of shame. Um, and so helping kids not only identify how they're feeling, but also, you know, who's involved in that? Um, is there a peer, a stranger, a bully, a teacher? Um, you know, helping kids identify who is involved, where something might have happened, um, and the skills that they can use to manage the situation. This was a game or a resource that did not yet exist. We were seeking it. Um, it wasn't out there, so we decided to to create it, which was also you know, a, a pretty great process over the course of a couple of years. I can certainly imagine. Uh, I love the fact that you brought up outside uh, influences. You mentioned, it, you know, is there a bully involved? Is there a teacher involved? Now, is this something that could really translate into the classroom? Because as I was going through it and I thought, what a beautiful way to to get some of these young people to communicate with their other classmates or with somebody who is bullying them and not necessarily always needing to, to bring it home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in fact, we've had a number of educators and um and school teachers reach out to us, purchase the games, purchase the games uh, for the classrooms, use them um, in early childhood development. And it's so great because helping kids to learn these in, in, the, in the early formative years of school also teaches them to take turns. It teaches them to share. It teaches them um, how not to interrupt each other. So it can absolutely be used and integrated into the classroom. Now, I've got a question that has come into the website, and again, I want to thank those that take the time to do it. And for those that, that don't receive our press release, we send out a press release. If you go to the website uh, and you register, we'll send one out to you as well, and you'll know who the guest is, is, is going to be on next that will allow you to do something like this listener has. This listener writes, I'm unable to listen live today, so I'm sending in my question ahead of time and will listen later via iTunes. Before I order the cards, can you explain what age children um, are they most appropriate for? I have a 9-year-old and an 11-year-old going on 14, so she thinks, or at least so she thinks, uh, <laughs> who... <laughs> 
who isn't very tolerant of her younger sister. I would like to see them engage more in a positive way, and perhaps this is a good item to add to our game room. Just need to know a little more. Thanks, and this is from Beth in California. I um, thank you, Beth, for your question, and um, I think it's a it's a great question. Uh, the The age range for these is actually quite flexible, but I would say that the most appropriate age range would be from about the age of four um, to up to twelve or thirteen years of age. Um, they can absolutely be used way beyond that. Um, teenagers have used the cards. Um, adults have used the cards. You know, these are skills that you ideally learn in childhood and adolescence, but there are many skills in this game that as adults we still need to practice and be reminded of um, because we didn't necessarily integrate them into our normal daily lives when we were children. Um, so, you know, to answer the question more specifically, I'd say four to uh, 12 or 13. But again, there, there's a lot of flexibility because, you know, essentially this game is, it's a conversation starter. Um, and, you know, when you're looking at these cards and you're looking at the feelings deck and the skills, you know, these are conversations that, that we'll be having with our kids until they leave our home, until they fly the nest. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. And would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, so I would just add that, you know, children um, use their imagination, they use logic and critical thinking, and we want them to do this at an early age. And so beginning um, at the ages of four and, and kind of developmentally going through 12 to 13 helps them, helps kids to be more um, aware of their surroundings and develop awareness of their environment. So I would absolutely agree that, you know, maybe at a younger age, we start with kids and we begin to just teach them some of the emotions. We help them learn to recognize facial expressions and identify them. And as kids um, begin to get a little bit older, they can really begin to apply and use some of these skills. And when they're learning them in this environment, then they're able to go and play and have fun with them and practice on their own, which is where kids really um, begin to integrate what they've learned. So yeah. more specifically you know, four to 13. Okay. Yeah. And, and I could certainly see that where you could have them literally kind of run with it themselves. Now, one of the things that I liked as I was looking at this was the fact that those of us as parents uh, and some people who are also out there as grandparents, so many things have changed. There are so many different trends. And so some of the things that we may think makes the most sense that we're going to focus on as parents, we may not actually understand as much as what kids are going through today because things have sped up so fast. So my question is, is that, you know, what mental health trends do you see happening with children that adults may not necessarily be aware of? And how do we help the kids increase their self-awareness so that they make better decisions? I think that one, one trend um, that separates, um, raising parents today versus raising parents, I mean, excuse me, raising children today versus raising children 20 or 30 years ago um, is, is the lack of connected time that we really have with our children. Um, often we're looking at dual income families, um, after school activities, a lot of running around, obligations, responsibilities, um, extracurricular activities, um, you know, sort of the list has, has grown and grown and grown, um, in terms of, of what family life looks like. And there's, there is so much less real connected time with our kids. I think, uh, research shows that it boils down to about 34 connected minutes a day that we might have with our kids. Wow. Um, and so I think that's one really important trend, um, to pay attention to so that, when you are sitting down and you do have that um, connected time, you're using it wisely and you're really talking about what's going on um, instead of allowing kids to stay on the surface with responses like I'm fine or everything's okay, I'm doing well, um, you know, accepting those sort of surface answers really doesn't allow parents um, a window into what's actually happening in kids' lives. Yeah, I think... The, no, and, oh, go ahead. And to, oops, Please. I was going to say, and, you know, to add on to that, you know, opening the door, which 
especially at a young age with just a few simple questions that are open-ended, you know, asking kids, what is, what was their favorite and least favorite part of their day? You know, what are, what was their most or least proud moment of the day? Uh, But we really want to encourage kids to, you know, open up and, and, and include them and their day and tune in to them with, you know, with that moment of connection where we're, you know, sitting down with them, we're looking at them, we're engaged with them so that they actually feel from mom and dad that they're really present with them too. Yeah, and I think you bring up a great point is is that the questions that, that we need to be asking as parents can't be answered in a yes or a no or or in a one syllable, you know, word or grunt. It has to be a question as you said. <laughs> what is the most interesting thing that happened today or what was the most exciting thing or something that that needs a longer answer that allows us to continue to engage them in it uh which i think is great and i and i think that's one of the things that the cards do so so tell us a little bit more about how the penny for your thought cards uh how they can be used to create the connections and and just increase the positive relationships that you have through that type of interaction. So a penny for your thoughts cards can really be used, you know, and it's not going to be, you know, monopoly kind of board game type of game. But what what parents can do is they can sit down with their um, with their kids at a young age and go through the emotion cards, and they can ask them you know, something along the lines of, you know, who's involved in your day and have them have their one of their kids pull out one of the cards, whether it's, you know, a teacher or a bully or a friend or a stranger, and then really connect it to some of their experiences. So where were they when that happened? And pull out a card that identifies where they were when they were interacting with this person and pull out an emotion card of how they were feeling at that time. And, you know, kids are going to have positive emotions. They're going to have negative emotions. You know, their emotions are really going to range. So we really want to, to provide a, a skills deck that really spoke to all of the cards. So asking them, you know, what did they do in that situation or what could they have done in that situation if they didn't, you know, if they didn't quite know what to do at that time, but really allowing the kids to, there's so many ways to use these cards too. Um, mom and dad can actually just sit down and say, Hey, here were some of my experiences this, and go through the deck and share stories of what they experienced, not only as a kid, but what they experienced as an adult to really help integrate that these are going to, this is going to be a fun game. It's going to be an open door to communicate, and it's going to be something they're going to use throughout their life, not just as kids. You know, kids want to feel like, you know, they are a part of the conversation, a part of mom and dad's world, and so they get to learn a little bit about mom and dad, too. I like that. Now, and what would be some examples and especially ways in which the kids can use the cards to discuss some of those things that maybe they don't want to discuss with the parents? I think that, you know, at times as parents, we can recognize when there's something brewing under the surface with our children's mood. Um, You know, sometimes we can recognize that, sometimes not. Kids can be pretty good at masking that. Um, whether, Whether you're pulling this game out because you recognize that your child is sort of retreating or getting quiet, or you pull this game out on a weekly basis to do a check-in about what's really happening. You know, either of those approaches is is completely fine. Um, but I, I think that sitting down and allowing a child, you know, first of all, they, it, it's playful. There's a dice involved. So they roll the dice. Um, depending on where that dice lands, um, they're they're going to start on the diagram that's included with the game. And, um, you know, one, one of the more common ways of going around the diagram is starting with an emotion card. So the child is able to look through the, the deck of emotion cards and pick the ones that might have applied to them that day. At certain points of the day, they might have felt excited. Another point of the day, they might have felt incredibly frustrated. And, and, and at some point, they might have felt nervous. Um, and so they can choose these cards, they lay them down, um, and, and then they move on to who were the people that were involved in these moments, in these feelings. You know, when they were feeling nervous, you know, were they with their peers? Were they with other students in the classroom? Were they with a friend? Um, and, and, and then that moves on to, you know, where, where, where do they experience these feelings? Um, outside, inside in school, at home, at the neighbor's house. 
Um, and then and then children move on to choosing skills that will help them manage these situations. Some of the skills they've never done before and we're planting seeds. So they get to see these skills, they're being introduced to them. Parents or grandparents or other adults or therapists are able to introduce the skills to them and, and have the child talk about ways that they can integrate these skills into their life the next time they're feeling nervous or the next time they're feeling scared. Um, and so that's how the game, you know, that's, you know, that's sort of how the game um, is generally played. That's really the traditional sense of the game that she described, that Catherine just described. And what's really great about it too, is that it's so flexible that if parents want to just pull out one card, whether it's an emotion card or a person card or a skill card or, or a situation place card, um, there's really, it, it's, it's, it, that card in and of itself is a conversation starter. So asking your child to talk about that card and how it related to their day, you know, is that a skill that they use? Is it a skill that they might use? You know, maybe they're going to be journaling in their, um, in their uh, journal later that afternoon about some of the things that went through their, um, through their life experience and through their day. And, and just journaling is one of the skills in the deck of card that there's a lot of research around that it helps us develop um, and work through problems uh, so that we can then later um, work out our emotions through communication. Um, oh, I'm having more feedback again with, uh, with our friends, our parents, ourselves. So really parents can use this in the traditional sense or they can pull out a card and they can go through the card. What was, you know, tell me about this emotion. How, did you experience it today? Did you experience it today? Who, who was related, who was, in, who was in that experience with you. So it's super flexible. Yeah, you know, one of the thoughts that comes to mind as someone who's worked with, uh, with children that have been exploited, be it human trafficking or, or other things similar, this seems like this would be a great tool for, for social services or someone who is trying to communicate with a young person who maybe has been on the street or, or who has dealt with some very difficult situations and to be able to kind of get them to open up about some of these things so that they can move through it. Um, has there been that use, or, or is this something that's maybe a little bit new to the game? We yeah. certainly yeah. use it I mean, in our practice. Therapist. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Yes, as therapists, we, you know, I, I'm a parent, but we also... Janine and I decided to create this in the context of our therapy practice, wanting more tools to sit with um, kids and teens that we were just building relationships with. The game is a great way to build relationships um, with children or teens who have you know, experienced trauma or gone through difficult or challenging times. And these are the kind of things that kids stay quiet about most of the time. You know, there's a lot of shame in that. Um, it's it's difficult to talk about experiences that have happened um, that are embarrassing or painful, um, and and this game is definitely created as not just a tool for parents, but for therapists, social workers, um, counselors, um, you know anybody who's really wanting to develop a healthy relationship with a child and and, and in such a way where the lines of communication are opened up. Yes, and, you know, we've actually had some really positive feedback from um, agencies. There's, an, there's a great agency, Kids Turn, and their local chapter in San Diego. Um, they work with kids who are um, going through some really difficult experiences, and they have used this game not only one-on-one -on -one with some of the kids to help them open up and share some of their experiences, but in a group format, too which also allows for cross-interaction and shared um, experiences, helping to normalize experiences and help kids feel like they're not so alone. So the game um, can be used certainly for opening up challenging conversations, helping to normalize and validate experiences. And, um, and, and when kids do that, it really eliminates some of the shame that maybe they've that they've experienced um, because they thought they were so alone and the only person to have gone through a traumatic experience. 
you know, I, and I love the fact that this, this sort of blends the, the social and emotional learning uh, that, that we all go through, but obviously more so with young people. Um, share with our audience a little bit about what is social and emotional learning and how it figures into a Penny for Your Thoughts cards. And, and more specifically, let's talk a little bit about the five components of social and emotional learning. Social emotional learning is a way um, is uh, is a research um, initiative, and it um, helps kids to identify uh, their emotions and connect them um, very similarly um, to a penny for your thoughts to their experiences. It helps them to empathize with others. It helps them to set and achieve positive goals. It helps them to. Um, uh, take perspective and um, and um, and use some of these skills in their um, daily interaction um, and the research is showing that um, when kids are able to set and achieve positive goals identify their emotions man regulate and manage their emotions uh, engage with other kids that they are uh, not only more successful um, in their home life in their school life, but the research shows that long term it's setting them up um, to be better able to cope and manage with adult experiences in their professional lives and in the families that they'll go on and ultimately create. And, and Catherine, do you can you add to that? Yes, you know I, the one thing that I would add to that is SEL is really based on the understanding that some of the very best learning for children, whether we're talking about in or out of the classroom, um, some of the very best. Um, and richest learning for children happens in the context of connected relationships. Um, and I think that's really essential to social and emotional learning um, because that connection, creating that connection is where kids are going to be able to open up about how they're feeling and discuss um, ways that they might practice the skills to help manage and regulate their, their feelings. Um, so that connection um, is really key to social and emotional learning. Now, for everybody out there, we're going to... Yeah, and... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And oh, I was going to say, and, 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 you know, to add specifically to, you know, the components, you know, we'll just break those down, that it is about self-awareness, which is how we perceive ourselves and our identity and our emotions. It integrates self-awareness, self-management, which is how we deal with these emotions and in regards to ourselves and others, and social awareness, which is the third component of how we perceive each other and how we perceive ourselves and relationship skills which is the fourth component, which is how we relate to others in areas such as engagement, communication, and conflict resolution, which is so important for children and adults. And all of these really integrate to help children become responsible decision makers so that they can use um, all this information to and, and integrate it to sort of think through the possible outcomes of a situation and evaluate and reflect on them. And like Catherine said, it's so important that this is learned in the context of relationships. All right, we're talking about a penny for your thoughts cards. If anybody's out there, if you would like to follow along with us, you can go to the website, which is a penny for your thoughts cards.com. Uh, and if you're driving and you can't write that down, just go ahead and go to the Answers for the Family website when you get a chance and all of the information will be there. But again, if you want to go to that site, if you want to open up another um, you know, another window and follow along with us, that would be great. We're going to take a break. We will be right back. You're listening to Answers for the Family. Founded over 30 years ago to meet the needs of families in crisis. Westfield has continually focused on resolving issues that negatively impact families and businesses. Our signature therapeutic transportation service helps to ensure that adolescents in crisis are safely transported to specialized schools, programs, and treatment centers with unsurpassed experience and success. We are supported by our full-service licensed investigation agency that has legally, professionally, and compassionately located hundreds of runaways and teens. We are experienced and qualified to help, offering solutions which may include referrals to our international network of top professionals in the fields of educational consulting, psychology, psychiatry, and investigations. Simply put, West Shield Adolescent Services and West Shield Investigations 
are the best solutions when your family is facing a personal crisis. Call 1-800-899-8585, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's 1-800-899-8585, or visit our website at westshield.com. Thank you. And we're back. You're listening to Answers for the Family. Our guests are Janine McGraw and Catherine Snell Ryan. We are talking about A Penny for Your Thoughts, and... It has to do with the card game that really allows us all to communicate better. Uh, So one of the thoughts uh, that we were talking about right prior to the break was we were talking about social and emotional learning. So taking that, how might learning these skills that we were talking about help children be successful in their adult relationships? I think that's part of the the beauty of this is, is that some of the skills that they're gaining at that point in time is going to hopefully help them with their careers, their community, and their own families. Yeah, so when kids are learning how to develop healthy relationships at a young age, um, a really important key component is how to manage their emotions, how to be aware of themselves, and how to be aware of the who may, they may be interacting with. And uh, for those of us in the professional world, um, and the adult world, um, we're all, you know, we're all faced with emotional challenges every day, whether, um, whether we're negotiating um, a business deal or uh, purchasing a home. There's always emotions involved. So it's really important so that we can have um, successful engagements and interactions that we're aware of ourselves. We're aware of our emotions and we're aware of how they are not only impacting us, but how they may be influencing or impacting another person. So being able to learn some of these skills at a young age um, is really what we wanted to do with A Penny for Your Thoughts by creating something that was a fun learning experience um, that um, kids could lose could use and learn as functional play over and over and over to build their confidence in these skills and abilities that are going to learn to them, that are going to translate to them in their adult, in their teenage life, in their young adult life, in their adult life. And Catherine, your thoughts? Yeah. Um, I agree. These these are these are skills um, that that we all that as adults we all need. I think Janine made a really good point. Whether we're you know managing relationships with coworkers, um, we're we're buying a house, we're interviewing for a new job, we're dealing with loss or rejection. Um, I mean, these are the kind of skills that all of us ideally would have learned and integrated into our lives as children and teens, and brought those with us into adulthood but but all of us see around us every day um how many of us didn't necessarily learn or integrate these skills early in life um and and it really does make a big difference learning this being encouraged to practice these skills in childhood and adolescence really does lead to a healthier functioning adulthood um and and that's and the great thing about this game is it's able it's able to, to, to plant these seeds, but in a playful way. So we, we're talking about something serious here, but for a child, their engagement with the game is also quite playful. Um, so it makes it, um, it makes it fun, it makes it connecting, and it makes it more special. You know, I think that's so key that right from the beginning, this sort of play is aiding in a child's development. Yeah, I was going to say that at. I think that as I'm listening to you, I think I see where the next set of cards can go. Uh, I think the next set of cards, <laughs> it might be team building for businesses because I think there's there's so much similarity to, to what it is that you're talking about in regards to communication. And, and I've had guests on that have talked about uh, some of the the younger people going into the workforce and not being in a position to where they're communicating one-on-one with people, they're more concerned with, you know, that they'll sit in a cubicle and instead of walking over to the next cubicle to discuss a project, they'll text them. You know, but it's like, well, you're right there. But but that's more of the way in which they're communicating. So I think we may have your next project. I'm, I'm sure you've got nothing better to do than to come up with a new project, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea! <laughs> yeah, and really, yeah, believe me, I love yeah, we idea. think about this a lot. Yeah, yeah, we do think about this a lot. And what a great idea to you know help 
what you're talking about is, you know, building relationships at work and strengthening them and building teams. And yes, you've given us a new idea and a new project to, to, to go ahead and start on. Great. Better for you than for me. Um, well, we, 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 we have another uh, comment that has come in. Uh, uh, this one comes in and it reads, uh, I was a huge fan of card games when uh, my children were young, but everything I see on the shelves today, although educational, I feel are pretty lacking in other areas. I just ordered your cards for my daughter and for my daughter and I to use with my grandchildren. The SEL aspect appears to be a step up from anything else I've ever seen. I am really looking forward to receiving and, in quotes, playing with them. And this is from Georgina in Houston. Mm. Well, Georgina, thank Wonderful. you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We are, and, and we would love uh, to hear your feedback. Um, some of some of the most rewarding comments have come from people who purchased, um, grandparent, grandparents, um, who purchased for, uh, for their, their grandkids or friends, uh, uh, friends, kids. And so we'd love to hear any feedback that you might have for us and your experience. Well, for those people that have listened to the show uh, frequently, uh, one of the things that they say that they like as one of the best parts of the show is the success stories. So, Share with us, and obviously we're not giving up any confidences. I'm not asking for any names or anything, but just share with us some of the success stories that have been passed on to you when people have used the cards and it has allowed someone in the family to blossom. I believe there are two that immediately come to my mind, and I was just sort of debating um, where to start with that. One child, and Janine, you um, you were in contact with this particular grandparent a little bit more than I was, so you may mm-hmm. want to share the experience of the child who lost who lost a, a parent. Um, that's one that immediately came to mind, and then I have I have another, but um, maybe you would share that, Janine. Yeah. So that. Um, um, that one spoke to me personally because I lost a parent. And so when this, this grandparent spoke, um, reached out and said that um, they had a uh, five-year-old who had, was going through a loss and they were able to integrate the cards to open up um, conversation, uh, to create a community of support for the child, um, it was really touching and, um, and, and, and really rewarding to hear that um, the game could be used for something uh, so important and so significant in a child's life, not only to help the child open up and share their experience, but for that child to know that they had a community of people who really cared about them and were um, were wanting to uh, be there for them and help them uh, connect and open up. So that, that was, that was one um, that Catherine just mentioned. And one that came to mind for me on sort of a lighter note was, um, a parent who uh, put the game of cards down uh, with one of her with her son, who was around eight years old, and um, and he chose on his own card sister and love. And mom said, "You know, I see them fight all the time and argue all the time. That I didn't know he loved her." And so she was. It was she was really touched to hear. Um, to, to have the cards just to get that piece of information that maybe in the back of her mind she assumed, but she had never really seen or heard um, because of the because of how kids will engage, um, siblings they engage with each other. And Catherine, I know you said that you had a couple that came to mind for you. Okay, now now Catherine, yeah, Catherine, before you share, let me let me ask Janine something. In, oh, sure. In regards to the first, oh, sure. the the first the first family that w- where the young person went mm-hmm. went through a loss. Um, share with with us so that we can kind of visualize a little bit better from the standpoint of of w- what is that child going through? In other words, are th- are they pulling a card? Are they being given a card? Um, w- when they read a card, are they being asked their emotion to the card? So share a little bit so that some of us can kind of visualize a little bit better because grief is now something that so many people go through, and it's it's so difficult to really understand what's going on with a young person when they're going through it because they don't verbalize it. So share with us how this this got them through it in a manner that 
that it appears to have, have gotten the whole family through it. Yeah, so um, I wasn't given specific details. Oh, okay. um, what I can say and what I can share is that there are cards in there um, that speak to sadness and loneliness and grief and loss. And that, um, and that I, I do know that the family worked together and that they um, communicated together with the child. Um, so what, what is a possibility, with sort of a visual possibility, is to just pull out these cards and to pull out the cards um, with mo- the mom card and the dad card and have the child talk about the loneliness or the loss or the sadness to allow a child to have a free expression of emotions to cry if that's what comes up to tell a story about mom or dad um to the child and um and also there are cards of hopefulness in there to let them know that there's grandparent card there and so i'm here and so we're connected and we're close and and that and and i think with grief just what's so important is that we first give kids just the opportunity to identify the emotion they might be having and then to express it and to and to really just be there with them while they're having that witnessing that and letting allowing them to have that experience yeah when when i'm visualizing when you're saying that is is that as you said let's say they're putting the mom card in front of them but they also have spread out emotion cards and it's up to them to pull which one they're feeling at that particular moment and then again as a you know making it interactive with the parent or the uh, the professional that might be utilizing it is is that after they've gone through those emotions then to be able to bring in some of the the other things as you said bring in you know what does you know having grandma around you know make you feel or something and and so you can take them not only through it but you can also bring them to to a better place before you end the game and that's that's what i'm visualizing so share with i mean yeah. am, am i seeing this correctly because it's very beautiful yeah i think that is that is you laid that out visually um beautifully in terms of how to use the cards with grief and Maybe maybe we maybe at the end of spending um, an hour uh, with a child, we close it up and let them know we can come back to it. Maybe um, and, and by close it up, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of visualizing the jar here. We're opening up a bunch of we're opening up and letting out emotions, and then we're sort of closing it, closing that jar after an hour to let the child know that they can now manage their emotions. And this doesn't mean that we don't talk about this again because grief is a lifelong process but what we do is we just we we open it up we let a little bit out we close the jar and we go on through our day and we know that there are loved ones there for us we know that there are people who support us and um and that's what the cards allow for they allow not only in talking about the emotions and and as you said beautifully laying them out and exploring them but in some of the skills that allow us to sort of express them and then close it for the day and come back to it because we want to keep coming back and coming back so that we're not um we're not stuffing grief and it's coming out somewhere else right or other emotions yeah and 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 i like that where you have them coming back because it's safe i like that it's yeah and and so so Catherine, and, and what is your the story that you're thinking of one story that really um, stood out to me was a parent who um, whose son is on the au- is on the autism spectrum disorder, and um, a difficult situation occurred at school. I think he was pretty severely bullied and stopped speaking for a number of months. Stopped speaking altogether for a number of months, and the mom ordered these these cards, and we got an email, a long email, and then we started a bit of an email exchange about it. Um, but this was really the first time he was able to sit down and communicate to them um, how he was feeling and what was going on for him. Um, and the you know the mom was really able to say that he um, he, he really appreciated the ability to show them exactly how he was feeling um, without speaking yet. He still wasn't quite ready to speak again, but he was able to choose the cards that expressed how he felt. 
and choose the cards um, that showed what was going on for him in, in his day-to-day life. And he also created more of his own cards. He decided that he wanted more people involved in that, <laughs> in, the, in the deck of people cards. And so, you know, he was able to add more to that so that it really spoke to and kind of personalized this game um, for his own life so that he was really able to expand the possibilities with it. And that, um, that really warmed, um, that, that situation really warmed me when, when I was in touch with the mom about that. I think you, you bring up a great point because, I mean, in one of the things that we do and we transport um, uh, young people who, who are um, suffering with autism or have been diagnosed with some level of autism. And so we work with picture books because, as you, as you know, some of them are not uh, verbal. And so in working with the picture books, this seems like a great addition to that, to, to make that picture book so much more interactive uh, by adding in things that relate to emotions, uh, I think this is this is a great thing. I'm, I'm, my mind's working as well as to additional uses. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to thank you both, and I want to kind of take this time to really acknowledge both of you because, you know, not only are you you're in a field that you are helping other people, but we realize that when we are in a field where we're helping people kind of one on one. There's, there's only a certain amount of people that you can get to because we only have a certain amount of time in each day. So I, I think that by putting together these cards, you've expanded your reach to where you're now able to make a positive difference in the lives of so many other people by doing it through these cards. So again, I just want to thank you and acknowledge you for that. Oh, thank you so much. It's really, it's really, uh, it's really nice to hear that. Thank you. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. This has been such a passion project for us, and um, we really do hope to get the word out um, to share this with as many people as we can, um, because it's because it's been so important uh, as part of our work as therapists, part of our work as human beings, and um, and and some of the skills and tools that um, we've gained over the years, and and, and want to share. Okay, and, and hope to share. And I think that's. Uh, that's a great call to help in the sense that for everybody out there that's listening, if you know somebody that can benefit from this, uh, when the show is over, forward the show, you know, forward the show or, or shoot out an email to some of your friends in your social media or, or to, to that one person, that one teacher that you know that, uh, that would really see this as a positive, help spread the word. That's what we're out here for, is to spread the word and to make a positive effect on as many people as possible. So uh, con- consider that our, our marching orders. So <laughs> Janine, Catherine, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, as soon as you have the next batch of cards now for, for team building, give us a call <laughs> and we'll have you back on. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. You're welcome. And for everybody out there, please be sure to put us on your calendar next week to tune in. Uh, that'll be Monday, July 17th, when we're joined by Sherry Dworkin, co-author of Women's Empowerment and Global Health, a 21st Century Agenda. And if you missed or you want to share one of our shows with your friends, please visit the Answers for the Family, uh, dot com website. Uh, or catch our latest shows on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google+. You may also subscribe or resubmit your name to download your free copy of the Attitude of Gratitude Journal, your 21-day guide to achieving the quality of thankfulness through self-discovery. And last but not least, please take a few minutes and leave a review on iTunes. This will greatly increase, increase our iTunes rating and help us to expand our reach to more families in need. And the next time you're on Facebook or Twitter, please remember to stop by our page, leave us a comment about the show that you just listened to. And with that, for everybody out there, be good human beings and make it a positive difference in the lives of someone today. Thank you. You're listening to Answers for the Family with Alan Cardoza and Matt Polachek, only on L.A. Talk Radio. 